Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, July 24th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Eddie O.A. Jr. And joining me is host of P.S. I Love You, XOXO, Greg Miller. <laughs> Greg, how's it going? It's good. How are you, you fucking sellout? I'm a, a sellout? Just, what? Send you a free Xbox shirt you're wearing, huh? That's how oh, you got another. You got a cap ready to go, too. Look at you. I you have no a... idea what you mean. Stand for something. God. Listen, all I, I here's the thing. Yeah. Do you know what console I believe is better? Is the console that sends me the most things. And so Nintendo, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. you want to send me a shirt, a hat, and some, you know, some fly kicks, listen, I'm Mario all day. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're a part you're all about that, that Mario. About that, yeah. Now Kevin, what are you about to say? Because I, uh, I heard I saying, I'm gonna just I'm gonna switch services and switch back to see if Greg's okay. ridiculously bad looking screen gets better. Yeah, I saw and then I'm too loud. Now, of course, as you know, he of course makes me change up my wow, game. Wow, look how pretty you me. look! You look like a look pretty at boy. that. Look Thank at. Everybody. I will say, Greg does still sound loud on my end. I, I, mean, I don't know. I brought. I dialed the gain down last night for uh, Halo because Andy was like, "Greg, your gain, your gain," and I'm like, "This is how it is every day, Andy." I know. You do multiple He's shows stop with talking me. Talking about this stuff, you, you know. Well, it's, you know, if I don't, if I don't humor him, he will sit there and the rest of the show be a cranky little jerk about it. So I had to do something. God, that's so accurate. I feel that. I feel that. Do you know how many DMs I got from my coworkers yesterday saying that my gain was too loud? Or saying that like I was coming in, I was clipping. And it's like Are you talking about us? Yeah, yeah we're your like, coworkers. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I forgot where I was. I mean, we're oh, trying man. to help you. you know oh, this I mean? is we're awkward, trying to help you, know? you, you know? I mean, listen. But it sounds like you fixed it. You said you fixed the clip, right? And the clip sounds Maybe, different. possibly. We'll see. I, like, I don't let me think, know, Kevin. I don't think you need to use that app you use to to handle the audio. Well, that's that's the thing I did. I made it so that Discord is now uh, hearing my mic feed directly instead of my voice meter feed. Did and you so, lower? Did you lower your uh, mic output? Yes, in the system. In the in the in system, system yes. settings. Okay. Yes, I did. Great. And so hopefully but things are good like now. It still looks like your not, gain. It still looks like your gain is at zero. It is. That's the thing that's great. My my gain is the lowest it can possibly be on my mic, and now on my actual computer, it is turned down to like twenty five, and so it is very low. Wow. Um, turn I, it up. At least you just turn it up for science purposes. Put it at thirty percent. My gain yeah, or my, or my... your gain on on the knob. Oh, that scares me because I feel like I'm going to start it, Just do it. Out. and then whisper and then whisper. Greg, take your headphones off. Hey, little mama, let me whisper in your ear. All right, we'll talk normal. Hello, 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 oh, hello, yes, hello. It's, it's distorting, it's distorting. Bring it back down. Distorting. All right, sorry, it's all the way back down. Wow, Can I come that's back crazy. Yeah. Can I come back? Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. All right, dude. Technology. Sure. This Greg, uh, not Greg, Kevin. Let me tell you about this thing called uh, VMix. Have you heard of VMix? Is that the one that you showed me last time where I was like, this seems complicated? Mm-hmm. That is the probably, one. That is probably the Andy. One. Yeah, because I was, dude, I was on, uh, uh, I'm going to do a Wait, do is this a the banana one? Quick. No, that's voice meter. That's, oh, that's the audio oh, software. Got it, got it. VMix, yeah. VMix is a video software that okay. they use over at Rooster Teeth because I was on a show called Effing this. Around, yeah, Effing yeah, Around yeah. with uh, Ify and Fiona, which fe- features the homie uh, Fiona Nova uh, and the homeboy Ify, uh, Achievement Hunter, Hunter. You might you might not be familiar with Ify, but he's an icon. If he's he a Nigerian did stand icon. up with us, he was great, right? Probably. That sounds about right. That sounds right, like something you, that would you happen. You seem with like Ify. you're on top of these things. Oh, you didn't go to our stand up. I didn't go to stand up. Oh yeah, that's what it is, Kevin. You know. Anyway, I mean? that's what I was, it felt like. It was a big I was deal. on their, sh- I was on their show yesterday. It's an achievement hunter thing. Um, and what are we I was, talking about anymore? <laughs> I was, I'm selling Kevin on VMix because it is okay, the future. Thank you. It thank is, you. It I is a video. There. It is a video. You're software. talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Kevin. I'm kidding. Let's go. It's just Google. Software. Just Google VMix. En- enough about video software. Enough about VMix because this isn't going anywhere. Plus, Let's just so you know, about... I have looked into it. I don't like it. You don't like it, I dude? Like it's amazing. It was really cool the things they were able to do with it. They were able to do like smooth transitions and all this stuff. Just look into it. Look into it, Kevin. I think there you was, like it. There was some reason I didn't want to. Do let me it. Sit, let me let's, let let me and you sit down. Let's look into VMix. Let's uh, figure figure all this out because I feel like it could be the future of what this is. You know. Nah. Let's talk about updates on yesterday's Xbox showcase. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima selling like hotcakes and G Four possibly be possibly making a comeback because this is kind of funny games daily each and every week day at 10 a.m live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about if you're watching live you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong if you don't want to watch live you can watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosteeth.com or you can listen later on podcast services around 
the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily to be a part of the show head to patreon.com slash kind of funny games with bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping our new first impressions preview of crash bandicoot 4 is up on youtube.com slash kind of funny games uh tim and barrett both played uh th- their preview demos and let me tell you man from what i hear tim very excited about it barrett might also be very excited about it i didn't hear his, his impression you don't listen to barrett nobody does. i don't yeah he talks and it's like right, come on let's not be mean together. to barrett guys that's enough of that all right he tried Barrett started it hey barrett hey, was hey. Me- barrett was mean it's to just Uncharted him or exactly he was to he was mean to fantasy. iron charted fan trash franchise and then he tried to walk it back and then he tried to act like something don't don't listen to barrett wait i'm sorry everybody. did you say uncharted i did yes all right i'm blocking him on twitter thank you thank you uh but yeah, Tim calls Crash the the Sonic Mania of the Crash series, Crash Four. And so, uh, if you're interested, check out that first impressions preview again on youtubecom so kind of funny games or on podcast services around the globe on, globe on the First Impressions podcast feed. Uh, Saturday, that's tomorrow, is the second episode of the kind of funny X Cast with Snowback Mike, Gary Witta, and Alana Pierce. And of course, they're going to be reacting to the Xbox Xbox Game Showcase that happened yesterday. See, now Barrett's DMing me and telling me to get my mic away from my mouth. And I'm like, don't uh, listen. Don't let him get your head. Kevin's unless producer. I'm He's saying not, something, you're fine. It's Kevin's fault. Okay. Block uh, Barrett on I'm your phone right Barrett. now. Blocking Barrett. All right, he's blocked. Um, uh, thank, on all of them. Thank you to, oh, our, wow. to our Patreon producers, Mom and Mom. Yeah, I can do that with one button now. <laughs> you did that with one click? Yeah, one click. Blocks him on Twitter, Insta, Slack, Damn. everything. Let's see. Uh, he's still somehow messaging me. He's getting through the block. He's saying, also, everyone is already... Oh, okay, well, now he's just telling me personal stuff about people being mean to him on Twitter. Barrett, we love you. You're okay. It's just sometimes when you talk nobody about Uncharted... Mean, nobody mean me, Barrett, all right? You know, Everybody he thinks nice he's these rocks, but then when you throw the rock back at his glass house, that's God too much. damn it, Greg Miller. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> nobody be mean to Barrett, for real. Let's all... Uh, for real. Pickles. Everyone. We're all saying... We're using the code word pickles. Safe yeah. word pickles. Let's all stop being mean to each other. Let's have a good show. Blessings of fucking sell out wearing all this Xbox stuff. Exactly. Tweet nice things to Barrett if you're gonna tweet a Barrett. Uh thank you to our Patreon producers, Mom and Muhammad and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by Klarna, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Rope Report. Thing. I'm like trying to like scoot away from my mic, but now I'm gonna be like a billion miles away from my desk. Uh, you so know, you know, uh, blessing is something that I had to do because your mic was really quiet a while back. Mm-hmm. Is I had to turn up your gain on my side, and that was still pretty high. So I turned it down, and oh my uh, God. that might have fixed it for when Jesus I'm Christ. running the stream. From when I'm running, I've been- <laughs> but like that doesn't explain that doesn't explain you being told you're loud by everyone else on a call. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I don't. I usually don't hear from other people on a call. We, we Except for yesterday when coffee. everyone DM'd you, right? Now, so while you argue about this, I'm going to go fill the coffee. That sounds you good. can start the first story if you want. That sounds good. Right? Isn't that what you said? Everyone DM'd you? Well, Barrett, like, pe- Barrett's DMing me. Like, not people. Oh, not you got to clarify that shit. I know we said not be- to be mean by Barrett, but I thought you mm. meant everyone on the call. No. Well, all right. Nobody, looks like we, fucking, we, we solved it. Turn up your game okay. just a little bit. Hit me at 15%. Oh, I, I feel like it's fine. Okay, I'm your hand is right there. Your hand is right there. Just, just yeah, just but like I it. don't want. All right, I turned I turned it up just a little bit. Yeah, oh, that sounds bit. good. That sounds that good. that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the chat. Oh, they love it. They love the it. Sad boy like Barrett kid is saying he sounds good. <laughs> now, Kevin, is Greg as distorted for you as he is for me? No, Greg looks uh, crystal hey, clear. Right, like not not visually, audio wise. Oh, he was hey, when he yelled. Me. I'm Greg Miller, and hey, I'm I, talking. He, I usually talk like this, and I say stuff about PlayStation, maybe sometimes about Xbox, never wait, hold PC. On. Was that a weird ass cadence that he just like said everything at? Because like it, it, it was. Okay, he did that on purpose. God, that, okay. was, that was. I like, this morning journey. feeling like this feels like it should already be Saturday, and this show proves it. <laughs> <laughs> this show proves we've all worked too hard, and uh, no, this is not it. I'll the go story? back to what it was before if you want. They say uh, the chat is saying I sound distorted. Yeah. Oh yeah, you definitely sound distorted. I wasn't okay. gonna make a big deal That's about back it. That's actually what the game usually was. No, now I made it worse. Fuck, really? Yeah. How's this? How's this? Well, you gotta keep talking. Ooh. Just saying two words yeah. isn't hey, enough. It's me, Greg Miller, and I'm talking to you, and I'm saying hello. Now you sound <laughs> fine. It just—it sounds like it's a gain, like a uh, gate issue. So, like when you start talking, it goes. Oh, uh, do I need to do I need to screw with the Discord gain thing? Again? Yeah, maybe. 
Everybody remember too. There's a pandemic, so we have to work from home and figure this stuff yeah, out so on the fly. This is your yeah, guys' da, 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 fault. Da, 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 da. I I told you motherfuckers to wash your hands in 2019. Nobody <laughs> wanted to listen. You wanted to be grubby cubbies out there running around rubbing each other's butts and faces. Um, Fred, Miller, so I'm under, the mic sensitivity down to 92, negative 92. What was it at? Is that better? It was uh some well, I already changed it, but it was somewhere like uh, negative 82. Okay. Go is ahead. the automatically determined input sensitivity off? No, it's on. No, turn, wait. Turn that off. No, it, it was on. It, I'm sorry. It was off. I had it on, I had it set to this gain that we had already. Okay, we'll turn it off. No, no, it was never on. It was never on. Okay. So it's now it's episode. off. And my in, you know what? They want to see how the sausage <laughs> gets made. It's a Friday was, episode. What is, your, is, your, what is your output volume set to? My output device is... Wait, hold on. No. What do you mean? Output volume. Underneath where it says output device, it says output volume. So just check yeah, it out. Yeah, it's uh, 100%. 106%. Okay, well... Oh, okay. Set it to just a hundred. Isn't that is out the middle. to me though? That's yeah, out, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Speakers, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. His volume. I think I will say also. Hundred percent. Isn't the Discord gate? Doesn't that? I feel like the Discord gate though specifically for when you're coming in too low, not when you're coming in too high. Because it sounds like Greg is coming in too high, which is cutting his, which is cutting his. That's why we just put down the input volume. I put the input volume down to 89 the year Ghostbusters 2 came out and the percentage Kevin told me to We put did it. We right, fixed cool. it. Fuck yeah. Everybody, yeah, we fixed it. Let's do a show. Kevin, roll in the intro and let's get it from the top. Let's do it. From the top, Kevin. You think he's going to do it? I'm not going to do it. Oh, Kevin, he's a wild card. <laughs> Story number one, Halo. I was going to say, to be clear, we're not restarting the show. We just wanted a fresh start for you, the viewer and listener in your car right now. Uh, Halo Infinite's demo yesterday at the Xbox Game Showcase was a work in progress build. This is from Jordan Alleman at IGN. The Halo Infinite demo debuted during yesterday's Xbox Game Showcase was a work in progress build, running on a PC with equivalent specs to the Xbox Series X. In an interview with Inside Gaming, Xbox marketing GM Aaron Greenberg responded to criticism about Infinite's graphics, saying, quote, listen, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's July. We're far from launch and holiday. You're seeing a work in progress game, end quote. He continued by saying that the stream itself may be part of the response. Quote, it's very hard to show the full power and graphical fidelity of what the Xbox Series X will be able to deliver for you over a stream. Go back and look at it in 4K60, end quote. Referring to the fact that the stream was delivered uh, live in 1080p, but the gameplay premiere can be viewed in 4K 60 FPS on the Halo uh, YouTube channel. That said, many have pointed that many have pointed to flat lighting and low resolution textures in official screenshots of the game. But Greenberg reiterated that the uh, that the looks will improve. Quote: The other thing I'll just say is this: It is a work in progress. I can tell you because we see build-in check-ins every week, and they make they make progress week after week. So between now and holiday, it's it's just going to get better and better. Uh, Greg, this is something that was brought up on yesterday's game da- games daily uh, because of course it was me, you, uh, Snowbike, uh, Andy, and Tim, and we were doing our whole reaction to yesterday's X- Xbox uh, right. games showcase. And as we we're doing that episode, you know, there were tweets and and um, essentially like screenshots that came out that yeah. didn't look as crisp and as like i don't know forward looking on, in the graphical department as i think people would expect from a big halo infinite game coming out on xbox series x mm-hmm. do you how do you react to what aaron's saying here uh, regarding it being a work in progress and that being the, the reason why i think this whole thing is a much ado about nothing i think we're taught we're judging a, a game that is unreleased we're judging it off of a stream i like because you know we've talked about this at length so i don't need to go into it but obviously we're playing i'm playing halo combat evolve for the first time right now I do not have a history with Halo. So when we finished the Xbox showcase yesterday, even when we were watching it, I was like, oh, this looks good. This looks cool. I, I, I mean, you know, it's will I play it? I don't know. Will I finish it? I don't know. Uh, it's not doing something for me on this nostalgia level. But the gameplay looks cool and the grappling hooks looks cool. And I, I thought I think the game looks pretty. And, you know, afterwards, there was this whole hullabaloo about it. And, you know, Tim went online and was talking on a tweet about uh, his idea of style versus you know, graphic fidelity and uh, uh, intensity, I guess. And he was talking a, a lot about how like Breath of the Wild is a beautiful game, but isn't pushing the switch to new levels in terms of what it can do and what it can't do. And that when I looked at this and from even what it's what we talked about, and it, this could be me selling Halo short too, for the record. Uh, 
when the box art dropped, the key art for Halo Infinite dropped, and even I, a, a, a not Halo fan, was able to look at it and go, oh, they're clearly calling back to the original Combat Evolved cover. They're trying to get back to the roots of what Halo is. Looking at this, this looks like the Halo art style I think of for Halo. Like I look at it, and I, even right now, I didn't, I didn't double back like so many of you did to watch the 4K demo. I'm watching it right now. I have it pulled up here. And I guess I'm technically only running it in... 1080 yeah uh, well what the hell is 1440p 60 i don't even know what the fuck that means that's what i'm it's higher than 1280 though that's what i know i'm looking there and i think the game looks beautiful the ray tracing looks beautiful like the game looks good i don't i i don't know what you were expecting i you know i saw so many people being like look at this it's uh joel's face compared to that the other guy the the human in their face and it's like well, that's not an app comparison. I think we already saw the Halo map and like how you it's more open and you're able to go take on these checkpoints and this stuff. Like that's not what Last of Us is. These this, it's similar to looking at something like uh, Ghost of Tsushima, where I was talking about the concessions made there when I turned it on after having beaten Last of Us Part Two and being like, oof, like this is not the Last of Us, but that is a beautiful game that has a style and has a world it's building into. And that's what I think about this. To Aaron's thing of like it's a work in progress. I think that would if i was and aaron's great aaron's been great to kind of funny and uh, ign forever uh but like i would if i was pr for that i'd be like oh let's rephrase that let's massage that a bit because that makes it sound like we're coming out with a game that we're running at 70 percent graphical fidelity and for the rest of their days now until this game's out that people are going to point to that quote and be like oh you said it was a work yeah. in progress but it still has the same t-. and it's it like, looks well, the exact I, I same i didn't mean like there's going to be this huge jump i didn't mean you're running around in a maya build that's just gray box like i didn't mean it like that I think that's how people are going to do, but it's also, this is sadly video games where I think people get so loud about silly things that they don't need to worry about all the way. Like it's exactly what he's saying in the second part of the quote, I feel where, Hey, you're watching a stream right now. You're not running it on an Xbox series X or your PC or even your Xbox one X or whatever you're going to play it on. You don't know what it's really going to look like. You won't really know what those colors look like. Not to mention that it's something I've found in my years of playing games is that, and I guess even I would say even more recently with Jen, uh, my wife being such an interested party in what I'm playing and sitting in that shotgun seat, the amount of times I'm playing something and she goes, Oh my gosh, that looks bad. Or oh, what is that? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it's something not happening in the direct cone of vision. It's over on the sides of the screen that you wouldn't be paying attention to that. Like, Video games in so many ways are magic and draw are drawing your eyes to a very specific, drawing your eye to a very specific thing that this is what, we're trying to showcase this is what we're trying to accomplish this is the effect we're trying to pull off like i saw people talking about pop-ins uh, uh, and draw distances and all these other things like halo infinite's an unfinished game and i think to get into a tizzy right now about how it looks or how it doesn't look is kind of silly and not worth it it's similar to i think the spider-man puddles when it was like we, we, people were so pissed insomniac that the puddles weren't there and they're like they're they are there they're on a different building what are you talking about like I thought the demo looked good and I'm talking about graphics and, and art mm-hmm. style and everything. I thought it looked pretty. I thought it looked colorful. I thought it looked beautiful. I thought it looked like Halo, which again is what I think they're going for. I, I think they came into this. Maybe I'm talking out my ass with, we want to get back to the roots of what Halo is and what, what does that look like? And it's this color palette and it's, it's this thing. And that's a decision they made that takes them down a stylistic route. I M O. Yeah. What about and you, I- boss? I mean, I agree for the most totally part. unbiased party and Xbox outfits that I'm not mad. I didn't get, even though Tim says they had a thing for me at FedEx, but it wasn't there when he got there. <laughs> I, I will say that in motion, I think it looked better than the actual still shots. Like I, when I first saw those still screenshots, I was like, oh, this thing looks, you know, kind of ugly. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think that that is the end all be all when it comes to what this game is going to be right like watching yeah. the gameplay yesterday i was like oh shoot this th- this game looks amazing from the sense of oh yeah it's an open world oh yeah the shooting looks fantastic like oh yeah like the design the the des- the the look of it from i guess more so like the art direction uh perspective yeah. you know is really drawing me in and i'm really digging uh what this thing is is, is looking like it's going to be from the graphical graphical side of things like Aaron Green, Greenberg's quote, I didn't like because I don't think that's how that's not how necessarily how video games work. Yeah. Like, you're, and you kind of alluded to this, but to like from now till release, it's not like they're going to be turning up the vol- the uh, the graphics knob, right? Like, yeah, you exactly. Know, more and more exactly. until like it looks better and better, right? It's not like they're going to continually like layer on new assets over and over and over again until you get the final version that looks incredible. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. And I think, yeah, T- 
to your point, when the game comes out and it looks exactly the same as it does now, yep. you're going to point back and be like, okay, so what what did you mean by And I get what he's saying because it is right now this shotgun approach. And it's not because it's the shotgun it's the shotgun of criticism that's coming at him and the Halo team right now. And I think correct me if I'm wrong in chat, please sound off too because I'm I can see out of the corner of my eye. It seemed like people liked what they saw yesterday. It was just that afterwards, the, oh, there's pop in here. Oh, there is this screenshot that looks really weird. And for me, I think you, when you have that much stuff coming at you and you're Aaron Greenberg and you're trying to respond to it, I think it, you can start passing things together that don't need to go together, right? Where he's talking about, oh, well, it's a game. Well, I think he's talking about draw distances, pop-ins, like, you know, texture quality. Like, yeah, that is something that will be fixed as they go on or what ne- could be fixed as they go on. But I don't, yeah, like in terms of the world in general being barren or whatever, stuff like that, not having the right idea, like that's a different conversation. And I think also, you know, to so that mm-hmm. screenshot that was kicked around because what it was a uh, uh, Nibel, right? Nibelian. Yeah. Yeah. On, on uh, Twitter, who does so much great stuff, showing that screenshot. I mean, like, I feel like I've seen this a gajillion times. And then Rocco from Mega64 talking to it, too. This is what we referenced. And it is that screenshots for games. And I'm not saying that, like, this gives them a pass for it, but. Again, this is magic, and if you wanted to, you I feel like you could honestly run around and make any game look ugly. I remember, uh, you know, early IGN days when we first got our, or I guess I it was actually uh, PlayStation came through and they brought the developers of a game called Uncharted, and I had played this game Uncharted at an event. It, it was right after it had been given the title Uncharted because before then it had some code name and I forget what it is now. But I remember playing at the event and we were all so impressed that this protagonist's pants got wet when he went swimming. Like, this was such a cool thing. And they came through, and I think it was Evan Wells, and it was uh, uh, Evan and Kristoff, maybe even. And we sat there, we played the game. This is back in the day where we had to play them in these giant capture bays with this giant set of capture equipment. And you record it, and then they would leave, and then you would go in and clip stuff out, and you would also go in and make screenshots. So I had to go in and make clips for Uncharted and screenshots for Uncharted. And of course, I want to get as much stuff as possible, as much diverse stuff as possible. And I put it all out. And I remember it was one of the few times where after everything went up, I got an email from Sony PR. And this isn't going the way you think. This isn't them crossing a line (laughs) in any stretch of the imagination. It was them hitting me. I'd be like, hey, you're allowed to do whatever you want. But screenshot, whatever the fuck title number it is that went up uh, yesterday, right, has a screen tear in it. And it's that this they were very clear of like, this happened. This literally happened. Like you got it on camera. Obviously, the screen tearing. It was like Drake split in half, right? From the yeah. but they're like, you understand that that happens at that one second, and like you played the game. You didn't see a lot of screen tearing. We read your preview. It doesn't talk about screen tearing, right? Like, would you mind taking it down? And it was that thing for me. Like, oh no, you're right. No, I'll take it down. That's that's fine. Thank you. I understand what you're saying. I understand the point you're making. And I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that. This screenshot that they've shown here of, you know, the the banished right standing there and like it being all weird and the textures being all uh, not great is like clearly that's just one frame. But again, as I watch right now the 4K demo and I see, you know, Master Chief zip line around getting into the car whose name escapes me right now doing not like I'm not looking at it being like this thing is ugly as fuck. This is basic as fuck. I'm looking at it being like this actually looks good. The reflections look great. Like. I like what I'm seeing. I like the frenetic action of it. And like, Jesus, he just ran over one of the little dudes and there's blood blue stuff everywhere. Like it, it looks good. I think I'm not saying it like in, if I was just pause it right here and take this screenshot that you look at, then when I start picking it apart, I'm like, well, is it as detailed as whatever? I think it's got a style to it. And I think it's right now much ado about nothing. To, to this conversation, I want to bring in two questions. Uh, one from Groovy Muse and another, another one from OMG Turtles 73. Uh, OMG Groovy- Turtles. OMG Turtles. Groovy Muse writes in and says, Greeting KFGD crew. There's been a lot of online chatter about how Halo Infinite's graphics looked yesterday. Do you think Xbox should have been upfront about the game being an early build? Why market your most powerful franchise leading up to, to a gameplay reveal and then have it look the way it did? And then OMG Turtles writes in and says, Hey guys, do you have faith that Halo Infinite will look a lot better by release? Personally, I do. I think it's a work in progress, which could not... Ha- which which could not have had the same level of polish it normally would uh, because of COVID and working from home. Still, do you think this kerfuffle could have, kerf- yeah, kerfuffle uh, could you know, have been but- any any sort of impact uh, or could have any sort of impact on people's perception of the game? Thanks for all you do. Keep on trucking, OMG Turtles seventy three. And I think w- with all of this, that's kind of the main question I have is 
like we see marketing for games for games all the time. This whole summer yeah. has been a huge marketing event for games that are upcoming, for games that are work in progress. Why is this the one that doesn't like I, I feel like so many times so many in so many cases we see the opposite thing happen where we get and this is like the OG watchdog situation, right? We get a trailer and it's like, oh, this looks incredible. And then you get the actual game and you're like, okay, this doesn't look as good as the trailer, right? Like I was watching a recent trailer for um well, actually, I was watching an older trailer for Last of Us Part Two, and I was like, "Oh man, this this trailer really has a lot more animations uh, than in the final game." But it's a it's a thing that I think we end up not caring about because we understand yeah. that that's marketing. We understand that, like, oh yeah, we can't expect these games to live up to the impossible expectations that we're seeing in in trailers that are made with with essentially like that work in progress in mind, right? Like trailers are often made uh, knowing that okay, yeah, the final vision of this game is this. And like our goal is to hit this, and in reality, like a lot of times they don't hit that because of how however how development goes. I feel like this is weird, is in terms of this game coming out and then putting out those screenshots and those screenshots not not necessarily looking great because like it's them that's putting out the screenshots, right? Yeah. Like it's not like it is an IGN or it it, it is um, Digital Foundry or or whoever that captured the screenshots and and they and they end up looking unfortunate. Yeah. So what's the question? <laughs> like what? <laughs> so, like, do I do you do you think Xbox should have been more upfront about this game no. being, being an early builder? What do you think the communication should have been around? I think the, that? the problem you you started from a question of you know why is it this one? Why are we mad about this one? Right? And I think it is the normal fact of it. It's Halo, and it is Xbox's biggest release. It is their console launch for the Xbox Series X. It is it is their 2020 right and. For and I'm not even being uh, the joking. I hate PC, and I'm a PlayStation fanboy guy. For a fan base that's been kicked around this long, this entire generation, right? Like, if you actually give a shit about a console or having people argue, or you know, every time you're like, "Oh, I love my Xbox," people are like, "What? There's no games on it." You you've sat there and you've been like, "Halo's gonna be the fucking thing. Halo's gonna be the fucking thing. Halo's gonna be the fucking thing." And when you get there, and again, I I know. We, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Like, you're not a Halo guy either. And I look at that demo, the, the thing we saw yesterday, and I'm like, I do want to play a modern Halo. Playing Combat Evolved yesterday is, like, fun on a lark, but it does also, like, what is going on? What is, and Tim's trying to explain things to me, and I'm like, how do I even do this? Because it's a game out of time at this point. Like, And I've played Halo 3, 4, 5. Like, I've played these games. I have never connected one, and I don't or connected with one. And I don't know if this would be the one. I am not a shooter guy. As you know, I, I love how Doom looks and plays, but I'm not a, I don't play Doom. Like, this is one that I think so many hopes and dreams have been pinned to of like Halo Infinite will be the one to put Halo back on top of the Xbox pyramid. It'll be the one that shows you why you need to buy an Xbox Series X. And it'll be the one you and your friends like you, like you listen to Snowbike Mike on the X cast, right? Like mm-hmm. he wants Halo Infinite to be a Halo game that people play every week every day right in a similar way you play Fortnite or warzone or whatever he wants people committed to it that way and not the usual three or six months you play with your friends and then drop out of it and so right now i think it's easy to drop hey they did, here's our eight minute demo i you know just a student of the game i guess think it looks great and looks really interesting and looks really fun and in the moment everybody looks thinks it looks great and looks really fun and then they get on the other side of it and then guess what those eight minutes now become eight weeks when's the next time we're gonna get a halo infinite dump of information right like you it's it goes back all the time to uh that quote from the movie that i'm now blanking on but uh, uh it's alex p keaton talking to the president in american president when he's when he's talking uh yeah Dave. american president remember this no 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 american president the movie american president with annette benning uh and uh uh air force michael one. douglas michael douglas remember richard dreyfus if you don't if you don't remember is run, is also going to run for president and he's he's like engaging in shitty tactics and he's like taking making really personal attacks against the president and the president's like i'm not going to do that because he's you know what a president should be uh staying above the fray and not going to get in the mud and wrestle with the fucking pig and Michael J. Fox is like his, uh, whatever, secondhand man, press secretary, I'm not sure. And he's eventually like, you have to understand, Mr. President, the people are thirsty and they've been walking in the desert and they are so, so thirsty that they are willing to drink sand. Like this guy is offering them sand and they're going to drink. Like people are so thirsty and hungry for content right now that when you get it to them, they devour it. But then that means that the hunger is still there and they're going to keep going, keep going, keep going over and over on it. And that's when you get picked apart screenshot by screenshot, moment by moment. And again, back to Spider-Man and the the puddles, right? Like 
This is our community that we're talking about. And I mean the mm-hmm. video game community, not kind of funny best friends or anything. The video game community, which makes up a fraction of the actual sales of video games, mm-hmm. where we are all fucking stuck at home right now. We are all living and dying for these events to try to break up the monotony of being sheltered in place and not having the 2020 we all thought we would have. And so, yeah, like it is easy to kick around. And like, I mean, we've all been in this uh, life on the internet long enough to know there's nothing uh, the internet loves more than a whipping boy. There's nothing, oh, a good punchline, a Fallout 76, an anthem, somebody to kick the fuck around. Like Andy was making fun of it yesterday, right? Every time somebody popped into our uh, chat while we were streaming Combat Evolved and was like, oh, is this the Halo Infinite demo? Thinking they were just the cleverest motherfucker on the planet, right? It's like, that's just how it is right now. But when we get closer, the next time you get more information on this game, when you get more information on the multiplayer suite, when hopefully knock on wood, it drops and it's awesome and it is great. And it does look fucking stunning on your Xbox Series X. It looked good on your Xbox X or Xbox uh, uh, X, Xbox, Xbox One, X. One X. Yeah, like that'll be the conversation. Those will be the things. It's 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 I think really akin to the hullabaloo you saw about the puddles. A little bit like you saw about Last of Us Part Two. Like people want to talk about Halo and they want to be excited about it, and then it does lead to okay, well, wait, this didn't look that good. And again, it's a game that. How long have we known about Halo Infinite? How long have we known that's going to be a launch title? Like you have, you do have hopes, expert, expert, expectations, right? Like, even mm-hmm. though it wasn't, I still was hoping they were going to say it was a battle royale. Even though I knew it wouldn't be a battle royale, like I think that'd be cool. Like I'd like to see that. And I want to see the audience react to that. What Brad, am, am, am I off? Am I off uh, top or uh, uh, off course? You think? Uh, do you agree? No, I, I agree. I think I think a big part of this is like, yeah, I, I mean, I think this is kind of what the games community is kind of what you're saying like yeah you know we have we have the tendency to to pick things apart and like you know want to uh uh you know go through every single screenshot and like analyze and do all, all that stuff i feel like in a sense this kind of feels like the opposite of the pedals thing because the pedals thing was like oh y'all went from, and again it was like it was like a stupid stupid kind of thing but you guys went from having so many so many puddles in your trailers and now i look at the final game and it's like where is all the puddles and it's like <laughs> what the what the fuck kind of complaint is that but i in, in terms of marketing i feel like it's kind of weird that they 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 go this route into like and and not necessarily like put out that 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 cut vertical that is like all right here's the most polished best looking part of the game um along with like reports we got yesterday that that was like oh yeah we're gonna get ray tracing later like i, I feel like there's certain there are certain things in regards to halo infinite that i feel like is interesting from the rollout of it but i think that kind of comes with uh it being a launch title it probably being not rushed but like you know with it have like needing to hit that date there are probably certain things that they, they, that they need to push back in order to make sure that happens and that that's not necessarily like them not completing the game it's probably them being like all right how important is ray tracing to the game okay we can get that in later how important is this to the game all right let's get that in later yeah, yeah. um and yeah like i i think i think with that you're going to have this happen right with a game this big with a game this important with a game this meaningful to so many people you're going to have people picking apart every single marketing marketing piece for it and like that's it, i i think all this is kind of natural for what halo infinite is and that said like i'm like for me as somebody who's not into halo i'm very much looking forward to it like i'm very much the trailer we saw yesterday which is the same trailer that people are picking apart is the same trailer that sold me on the game like that's the same trailer that had me go like oh shoot this looks really fun this looks like something that is uh fresh and that is like looking around at what other games are doing and being like all right how do we do how do we do that but better right like how do we bring in a grappling hook how do we uh you know go back to our open spaces in our open world and make that thing bigger and better like i i i everybody's gonna take something different from yeah, exactly from, from the, the, eye of the beholder right exactly and i i mean i think it's still gonna come out and be good which is the thing that's important about it and it is yeah and that's and it's to your point of, and I know we're trying to get transition out, sorry, but I just want to make okay. one that I thought was interesting of just like, I think Halo yesterday had to do so much heavy lifting, if that makes sense, right? Where I think uh, when we all got on the other side of that, it was like, all right, cool, but like, all right, like, yeah, where were the giant AAA thing? All right, Fable got confirmed at the end, but it wasn't gameplay, so it was like, oh, we already knew Fable's happening. Where, like, And granted, that's because, you know, we're following the industry, and you see leaks, and yada, yada, yada. Like, it's all how you want to spin any of this where I think so many people are excited that it's Halo back to his roots and it looks like it looks like Halo. People want that stuff. Whereas I think, you know, I saw in the Spider-Man subreddit, uh, somebody 
oh, I, one of those posts of, oh, I just noticed this. And it was from one of the Miles uh, trailers of him doing a kick that is super reminiscent, if not the exact same thing as Spider-Man in his first trailer or whatever, when the mm-hmm. Spider-Man PS4 trailer dropped. And I was like, oh, what a cool thing. He learned that from him, right? And it's like, yeah, but if I want to scroll four more comments down, I know I'm going to find somebody who's like, they're just going to reuse the same animations and then try to sell it that Peter taught Miles how to fight like him. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, to keep on the Microsoft uh, side of things, story number two, even Rare isn't sure about what as well. This is Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle. Rare hasn't discussed Everwild much yet because it's still exploring how the title's core themes will translate into gameplay. According to studio head Craig Duncan, and before I even can continue here, right, like this is another one that's piggybacking off of discussions we had yesterday coming off of the Xbox Game Showcase where we talked about Everwild and I, I remember it was me and Andy uh, and I think Snow White Mike, uh, they were all like, all right, Snow White Mike was like, uh so yeah what is the game because we've not seen gameplay and he's like oh yeah i mean i think it's gonna be this this and this and i was like oh i think it's gonna be this this and this right like none of us really know what everwild is yeah uh so to continue with the new story uh everwild was officially announced at microsoft's x019 event in november 2019 when it was confirmed that the title was still in pre-production set in a natural and magical world uh, everwild is being helmed by executive producer louise o'connor a rare veteran who's worked on animation for conquer's bad fur day and banjo kazooie nuts and bolts and studio, and studio creative director Simon Woodroff, whose last game was Sumo's Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Providing an update on Everwild in an interview with, with Polygon, Duncan described it as a very unique game. Quote, we learned a lot from Sea of Thieves. At its heart, we love the idea of Sea of Thieves and players creating stories together. I think with Everwild, Louise and her leadership team are really passionate about giving, a, giving players a world that they can lose themselves in. Uh, you know, a, a lot of nature feels magical. So the notion of what does it mean to nurture a world? What does it mean to be in nature? Part of the reason we haven't talked a lot about Everwild is because we're still feeling a lot of these things out. We're still playing around with gameplay ideas. We'll have plenty, we'll have plenty to say in the future on that, but we have an idea we, really, we feel really passionate about and uh, think there's something special. I have a team of people that wake up every morning with the desire to make a game, uh, to make this game that they're really, really passionate about. End quote. Greg. Well, my question is, are they passionate yeah. about it? I mean, I think they're very passionate they about it. They sound like they're passionate about this game. They sound so passionate. Like, very I, passionate. I, so I think this, this story told me two things. One, this game is further off than I thought. Because I was thinking like, oh, yeah, maybe we'll see this game next year. Um, and again, like this is one, another one of those ones where I'm like, oh, maybe this game is probably like 2022, 2023. Um, but also, I'm now kind of more on Andy's side as far as what he thought it was. Because he started describing like co-op and uh, like, like um, so much like kind of what Sea of Thieves is. Mm. And them kind of talking about here about like, yeah, we love Sea of Thieves for this, this and this. Um, and like create then, you know, them uh, saying specifically, right, players creating stories together. Um, that seems to me like something they really take pride in, something that they want to take and run with, because I think that's the most impressive thing about Sea of Thieves. From the little time I've spent playing Sea of Thieves, the the fun that I found, found out of it was like this feeling of freedom that I found playing with my friends, right? Like it's sure. not, it's, it's not structured really, like. There are certain things you're doing, at least when I when I was playing, like there was a, there was a limited amount of things you're doing, right? Like you're going to islands, taking out the skeletons, collecting treasure, uh, fighting the kraken, doing doing all that stuff. But ultimately, what it came down to was like, oh yeah, go your own direction, do your own thing, have your own fun, uh, live in this world. And you know, them citing the idea of, oh yeah, we love players creating stories together. Um, you know, I, in the, in the quote, you know, they continue, I think with Everwild, Louise and her leadership team are really passionate about giving players a world that they, they can just lose them, lose themselves in. Um, that sounds akin to Sea of Thieves. And to me, that sounds like Everwild is going to be more so of a, Hey, you know, co-op experience. You're in this, this magical wild world. You get to, 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 you know, do what maybe Andy was saying, right. Which is like, you know, have, have a kinship or have a relationship with with these animals that'll then help you on your journey or whatever. But Ultimately, freedom seems to be the goal here, which I think could be really cool. Um, Greg, does this does this strike any interest in you when it comes to Everwild? I mean, I think Rare is incredibly talented. And I think when you watch the Everwild trailer from yesterday again with this, even though we're talking about the fact they're still working on what the gameplay is, right? 
it, I think you start seeing it in there even, right? Because there is this part of, do you remember it well? Because I'm, I'm looking at it right now, I'm cheating. Obviously. The trailer? Yeah. Uh, like, I remember. I mainly remember the 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 big creature that had a bunch of fish fall out of his mouth. That's like the main sure, thing I remember. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. When you look at the actual characters around the campfire, though, and then also at the end when they're resurrecting uh, the deer that was hurt or whatever, you notice that they're all in similar outfits, outfits, but all in different colors. And then when you like, you know, there's like different primary colors of like yellow, blue, and then this like turquoise and this darker red. And when you skip skip it to the very front of the trailer and watch it again with a little more context, you see them basically walking with what I would describe as their pet. Or whatever, maybe their partner. Mm-hmm. When you start thinking about a game that, like for me with Sea of Thieves, you know, I think it's a cool idea. Um, we were going to do a party mode for it when it first launched. And when we turned on all the Xboxes, Andy's hadn't updated. So that was the end of that. We never did it again. And I've never touched it since outside of events. But when I'm playing it at events, and so I could totally be wrong, what gets me about it is I'm like, oh, this seems like a fun game to play with your friends, but I'd rather it be and then stick with me something more like the division where I can go do a bunch of work on my own. And then when I want to team up with other people, I can team up with other people, even monster hunter to a degree. Right. And so as I look here, I'm looking at like 30, 37 seconds in, there's the woman in yellow walking around with her big pet that is also has yellow markings on it. And so I, that gives me the idea of like, what if it is that in ever wild, I'm in this giant, you know, foresty world or whatever world of nature. Right where I'm having my own adventures, I'm doing my own things, but when I run into other characters or I need other characters' help, like you, Bless, I can call you in and do it, right? Because mm-hmm. even when you jump to 52 seconds then, it's the, I think, woman in blue, maybe man in blue. Oh, man in blue, he's got a beard. Uh, who's uh, working with another giant pet to tear down a tree who also shares the same blue he has. And it seems like if I have in this game a pet companion with me that's like we're you know batman and robin kind of thing or whatever or even for you it's like a trico situation if it's that then it, you, i do get to team up with two other players who also have their pets to go run missions and stuff that starts interesting me that are making me interested in what that world would be and what we'd be doing in it obviously there's a lot more to it uh the trailer is beautiful uh, but yeah what is the gameplay what is the world are, are we off base like it'll be interesting to see what they come up with but yeah it's definitely a ways out still to uh keep with this xbox xbox train since our first three stories all have to do with xbox uh, story story number three don't nods tell me why aims for a transgender story not rooted in pain or trauma this is james bachelor at gamesindustry.biz life is strange developer don't nod entertainment has said it will avoid telling a transgender story quote rooted in pain and trauma end quote in the upcoming tell me why in order to avoid further further propagating the stereotype the studio added an FAQ to the game's website following a new trailer and release date during yesterday's Xbox Game Showcase. Warning that the answers contain spoilers, the team revealed that each of Tell Me Why's multiple endings will have an optimistic future for Tyler, the transgender character who serves as one of the, one of the game's two protagonists. The character was assigned female at birth but identifies as male. Quote, because so many mainstream narratives about trans people are rooted in pain, and tra- pain or trauma, it was important to our team to tell a different, more multi- multi-dimensional story with Tyler, the studio wrote. The team also emphasized that Tyler's transition was not the result of childhood trauma, with promises of scenes that depict him expressing himself as a, po- as a boy prior to his mom's death. Quote, The idea that being transgender is caused by trauma is a stereotype that has no basis in fact, and it plays no role in Tyler's story, the team wrote. By extension, the the game will not depict any transphobia against Tyler beyond some ignorant comments and microaggressions from characters in the opening chapter who haven't seen him since transition. From the second chapter onwards, all interactions are are respectful. Tyler is also never referred to by his birth name or dead name. Tell Me Why is an episodic adventure series, much in the same vein as Don't Nod's flagship franchise, uh, Life is Strange. It'll be, it'll be exclusive to Xbox One and PC, and the first episode will be released on August 27th, 2020. Greg, I thought this was interesting, uh, mainly for the idea of uh, the studio putting out an FAQ that contains yeah. spoilers for their upcoming game, yeah. you, know, you know, for the purpose of being like, hey, all cards to the table. This is how we're handling these things. Like this is what you can expect from our game. Um, you know, especially with the you know the the themes that th- that they're touching on, um, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, Greg, I, I don't know if you awesome. had any. any thoughts. Oh, I think it's great. Like you know, from the from the jump of this one, uh, when this you know started making the rounds, obviously, uh, tell me why and it was going to have a trans main character and stuff. It. Oh, it's the same question I think you see uh, rightfully asked whenever uh, a trans person or I guess a minority is represented in a video game of that's awesome representation matters. We want to see that. Who do you have on the team who's 
working on making sure that's accurate, right? How do you want to go about that? What do you want to do? We saw it with, you know, spoiler. Well, I don't want to spoil anything. We saw it recently in an, another game. Uh, we've seen it in other stuff. We right now, uh, what, um, Deadly Premonition 2, right? Is in yeah. a whole brouhaha about it because like Sweary clearly doesn't fucking get it. <laughs> Thinks he's fixed it. And everybody's like, no, you didn't fix it at all. Uh, you, you, when you do this, it it is that point of like, great, representation matters. And we want to see these stories, but we want to see them done right. And so when this got announced and it was don't not doing it, I was immediately like, okay, I'm, you, you don't give anybody blind faith anymore, especially in 2020. But mm -hmm. don't nod. I do know pretty well from uh, you know covering uh, the Life of Strange games and getting to talk to them and hang out with them. And it's like, yeah, they are for the most. The, and I should, I'm painting with a broad brush. The people who come and do the podcast, and you know, uh, Michelle being like the front facing person of it, are white French dudes, <laughs> right? Who like I and I don't, I don't know anything about their sexuality or anything like that, so I won't go that far. But they're white mm -hmm. French dudes that you do worry about, like, okay, cool. And even with Life is Strange too, right? That dealt with race is such a topic. It was like, how are you handling this? And especially race in the, all the struggles of racial relations in in America. How do you deal with that? So. I always thought they had good answers for that. I thought, you know, again, I'm just a straight white idiot dude too. So like, I thought they handled it well and did what I always love about these games, which is give me a glimpse into someone else's shoes. I think what our medium is so good at is letting you actually become a character or at least be friends with a character. You may be a, a, a minority you've never met. So you understand the struggle a bit more. Anyways, all that said, I was like, I, I trust they're going to do this in, a, in the correct way or the right way in a way that's respectful. I think this is, what we want which is another level of showing that respect i think the you know the classic mm -hmm. way to do this would have been to put out the tra the trailer and have people be wait is this going to be like this is going to be tropey is going to be this and you'd be like no but we don't want to say too much more we'll let you play it this was a better way of doing it of like listen our game's all about narrative and we're going to just put it up here and there's spoilers in here for the interactions and like you said that the endings are positive but we're not telling you the actual narrative we're more by process of elimination, telling you what's not going to happen in this game, which I think is, again, awesome because you want to have the community you're trying to represent behind you and understand why you're doing this. And you want them supporting you as much as you're trying to support them, if that makes sense. Yes. And I think especially you, you mentioned, right, we've had a, a few games come out recently that, that, that you know, had trans characters or dealt with trans issues, right? And from both of them, I've heard people take issue with, with certain things that uh they did especially with deadly premonition you know which was attempted to be fixed um and that's why that, i think that's the main, main reason i find this faq not only interesting but valuable mm -hmm. because when it comes to something like dead naming or you know certain like certain other issues that trans people face especially like like stuff like yeah so many so many uh stories with trans characters are rooted in some sort of like uh trauma or rooted in some sort of like violent or 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 violence or or darkness right and that tends that tends to be a thing that that um is true with a lot of marginalized characters in not only games but tv stories in general um and so like if you know if i'm coming to tell me why curious about representation and how they're going about it that probably would be my first question like going into the game like all right, am I gonna am I about to play another game where the where a trans character is dead named, or am I about to play another game where a trans character ends up like you know either killed or killing somebody, or things are are super fucked up in some sort of way that uh, leans into tropes that we've seen before in in other games? Um, and so to have this FAQ available for people to be like, hey, you know, we're not doing this, 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 and this. Uh, expect this, 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 and this uh, as sort of like this, uh, like re refreshing glance on what you can expect in a game. Yeah. Uh, I think that's I think that's really cool and 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 actually like really important. Uh, so shout out to them. Now, we've talked about Halo Infinite. We've talked about Everwild. We've talked about Tell Me Why. Um, all which were present at yesterday's Xbox Game Showcase. And with that, I have a question here from Travis Gaikowski that writes in and says, "Good morning, KFGD. Double A Gaming is back and is called Xbox Game Studios." Yesterday's presentation made it clear that Xbox has found a third path from PlayStation and Nintendo. Nintendo targets children, parents, and lapsed gamers. PlayStation is the home of massive AAA blockbuster uh, single-player narrative, and Xbox, well, Xbox is the best value in video games. And being the best value in games means that you are going to have that you aren't going to have the biggest, most exciting games available. Even Halo Infinite, which looks great, 
is not pushing technical boundaries in the way that Sony's first party offerings do. But Xbox does not seem interested in fighting that battle. Do you think this approach is going to work for Microsoft? Do you think that Microsoft's slate of AA titles can put up similar similar number, numbers uh, to PlayStation's exclusives via Game Pass? Greg, I don't know. I, I don't know if you've thought about this much, but this is actually a thing I've been thinking about quite a bit over the last twenty four hours as we've been. Sure. There's a lot uh, of good think pieces getting written about it too. Yeah, like coming coming off of yesterday's Xbox Game Showcase, because I know for me personally, immediately after I was like, oh, I'm not blown away by this thing, and I I can't put my finger on what it is, but like something about it is not you know, didn't strike me as exciting or didn't extract me as like the next step to what gaming can be in the same way, especially like coming off of PlayStation's event, like in, in the same way that that did. Um, and I think this, like what Travis is kind of getting out here is part of it. Um, because yeah, like when we look at so much of what Xbox game studios are putting out, right? Like we're looking at games like Tell Me Why, we're looking at games like Everwild, we're looking at games like... Um, Grounded. Uh, you know, Grounded, you know, like the uh, Psychonauts 2, which I know they started on beforehand, but like Double Fine in general, right? Like even even Hellblade 2, Sinua Saga, which I would say is one of the most anticipated games coming out of Xbox Game Studios currently. A thing about Hellblade 1 that, it ma- that I think made that game special is how double A it was and how mm-hmm. it, 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 it balanced that perfectly, you know, in terms of, hey, we're, we're putting budget where it matters, but this game is going to be six hours. And it's it's telling a meaningful story, and you know certain parts of it aren't going to be as polished as the biggest games out there. But it's it's I think they called it triple I, so like indie triple A, which I'm just going to call double A. Um, but you know that's what you could expect out of it. And Hellblade two, I don't know how how much more triple A that game is going to be than Hellblade one, which I find to be fascinating uh, from the Xbox side. I don't know if you have thoughts on any of this. I don't want it to be more AAA than than Hel- Hellblade 1, right? I think you have something very special with Hellblade, and I think you should continue to do that. And I think that uh, that team, which was so small, right? I, and, I, and I always fuck this up, but the woman who is the character uh, of Senua, right? She was what? Yeah. I forget. She was like uh, the... She was like the video 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 editor, editor, or, something video like editor that. or something like that. Yeah, her name was kind of funny. Dot com slash you're wrong. Please correct us on that. But it is that thing that you know she just got put into that role, and they were like, "Oh fuck, you're actually really good at it. Why don't you stick around and do the whole thing?" And it's like, mm-hmm. I think that scrappy attitude makes a very specific game and makes it in a very fat. Uh, I shouldn't say very fast, but a quicker timetable than a big bloated AAA team. I think that if I think what Xbox you know has talked about, and we're still I still believe we're seeing it, but it is proof in the pudding kind of thing of bringing on Double Fine, bringing on uh, Ninja Theory, and being like, hey, cool, you're really good at making this kind of game. Keep making that kind of game. We're not coming in here and saying, cool, triple si- your team size, move to this different place, get a hangar, let's go that way. It's no, like, make the games you want to make and make the games you're good at. You know, partnering with uh, Don't Nod for Tell Me Why. Again, makes perfect sense. Three episodes, as we were talking about yesterday. Like, tell your story. Do you have a story? We'd love to see it. What would it be? Doesn't matter if it's short or long. It's going into xbox game pass and really bolstering that system and i think that's the question right like travis asked do you think this approach is going to work for microsoft i do i think that it's and it's what you've seen it's what tim said yesterday right tim said it Mm -hmm. yesterday on the on the post show of like xbox isn't in a console war anymore that's not what they're fighting place the playstation xbox and nintendo are all fighting very different wars right now and or you know not even fighting i guess is the thing they're all marching their own beat they're all doing their own thing and sure that thing is selling video games but it's all selling it very differently where i do think that xbox's approach is going to work because i think especially with xcloud especially with pc uh, attachment especially with every version of the xbox basically on the market running uh, the games that are out there that gets you in and maybe it doesn't get you in the way I had always said, like maybe, you know, you come in, you're using it. You're like, Oh my God, I'm playing halo infinite on my Xbox one X or I'm playing it on my uh, PC through X cloud, or I'm playing it on my phone through X cloud. And you're like, I should really get a series X. Maybe that doesn't work that way, but who cares if you're g- giving them the money month after month, you're playing those games month after paying for those games month after month and getting things like this. And it is a thing of getting, double a games in there that are exclusive to the platform or console launch exclusives or whatever that are giving you enough reason to stay around and play things there first and stick around and keep that subscription going and make it worth your while yes and i think that's that's such a big thing for them right now and like i'm I'm still kind of coming to terms with how i feel about it overall as a strategy because i'm still i'm still in the place where i'm like okay well state of k3 isn't necessarily going to do it for me right like Whatever the um, We Happy Few studio, whose name I can never remember, whatever they're working on next, compulsion. I don't know. Compulsion, yes. Whatever Compulsion's next game is, like I don't know if that's 
necessarily going to be for me because historically their games haven't been for me, right? Like there's so much there that we saw uh, yesterday that I was like, mm, like none of this is really, none of this really feels like it's for me, but to the whole argument of them building an ecosystem and building game pass and building X cloud and building all these different things, right? Like that, it, I, 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 the more I stay with it, the more I'm digging the direction, the more I'm like, okay, there's something here. I think for me, the challenge now comes down to how, how do you build excitement? And I, I asked this question yesterday, but like, and I still don't really have the answer, right? Like, what are we looking forward to from Xbox in 2021? That's huge. Um, and I don't think we necessarily have a concrete answer on that. And, and even when it comes to like their, their big franchises that we know of, right? Like Halo Infinite is going to be a launch title and that's great. And that's awesome. Right? Like, When's the next Gears? Uh, they they announced Forza Motorsport, but like, when can we expect that? And what does that mean for that franchise? Yeah. Um, you know, like they have the initiative, which is working on their quadruple A game, right? Like, when do we eventually get that? I feel like there's so much that they're working on too that is also like far out. Like at at this point, I'm convinced that Everwild and Hellblade Two are far out, and so like Hellblade's next year. Take it to the bank, man. Blessing. Do we want to do we want to make this bet? I'll make a pizza bet right now with you. Hellblade 2021. Dope. I'm saying after 2021. Okay. So shake on it. Boom. We shook. <laughs> Done. <laughs> but even with that, I feel like they're still, I feel like even though they're, you say they're marching to the beat of their own drum. I think even though they're marching to, you know, in the, in the correct direction, like I'm curious to see like, and I don't, I don't really have a good metaphor to add into this metaphor, but like, you know, how big can they make that march essentially? Like how, like I think, what's going to keep that march, you know, energized. If that makes it's, sense. Well, it, I understand that. I, uh, but I think it's honestly what it'll be is a, shake up of how we think about all this stuff i think that you know the past few years it's been that struggle on multiple fronts for multiple different things of trying to shake us from the traditional way of thinking and i mean the traditional way of revealing a console and revealing a game lineup right that we've seen shaken up this year i think i'm pulling from the chat here right c order 1988 says i hope don't nods new game is a timed art exclu- yeah i hope don't nods new game is a timed exclusive inferring of course you and i'm extrapolating here and i'm also not throwing you under the bus here uh Mm -hmm. but yeah that tell me why it's going to come to playstation eventually right my response to that would be i get that and i understand that but immediately i go why why do you care if it's a console exclusive anymore because think of it this way it it, they announced afterwards it is a console exclusive guess what tell me why is coming out six months later to the playstation 4 slash 5 you can get it for 30 bucks 25 bucks whatever you can play the theoretically and i'm playing fast and loose a little bit with the timeline but you understand where i'm going with this and where i think our argument's going to change every day this fucking doctor calls me during this one show and then doesn't return the phone call elsewise it's the argument that sure you can buy it for 25 bucks we'll say on playstation six months from now but when xcloud is a real thing and just ready to go and run on anything why wouldn't you spend the 15 dollars the 14.99 or if you're starting for the first time with xbox ultimate one dollar to get in and play those three episodes now and then cancel it like that's i think that's the rationale we need to you start worrying and and don't get me wrong i'm a trophy hunter i get all that i love my platinums i love my ecosystem i'm there's definitely going to be games that come to xbox game pass and i look at and i go cool i'll wait that's because i'm busy i'm prioritizing i'm i'm you know putting things in it, like we've talked about before if they did this a bad example because there's so many th- caveats but if the next batman game the next superman game whatever was exclusive to or had a timed exclusive to xbox i'm playing that day and day day one on xbox i'm not waiting for that to come to playstation i'll probably re- replay the ghostbusters game right if you're that into don't nod if you're that into tell me why why wouldn't you fork over the 14 bucks get the game six dollars cheaper maybe even ten dollars cheaper play it immediately and again i'm saying play it to your phone play it to your ipad play it to your computer i'm not saying you don't own an xbox maybe you don't own a gaming pc again remember x cloud eliminates all that i'm talking again what happens in september when this deal finally happens i think when that starts happening that'll be interesting and for me personally that'll be in terms of me personally as a pundit who takes it on the chin a lot when we have conversations of like greg doesn't understand the value of a dollar anymore he gets all his games for free which i get all my games for free for the most part which is very true i like to imagine i still do understand the value of a dollar when this goes that way when it is this conversation of guess what motherfucker you have an xbox in your hand it's your phone you have you have the ability to play these games and especially something like a don't nod game that isn't for the most part quick time or you know twitch gaming it is making choices and walking around and exploring a thing why wouldn't you do that? And then once you, and that's when it really, the Trojan horse stuff starts happening. 
Mm-hmm. Cool. I got it for a month for Don't Nod. I played all three episodes. It was nine hours. I have half a month left. I might as well play something else. Oh, this is cool. You know what? I'll let it go another month. I was going to cancel it after one month, but why not let it go? And then you see people stay or you see them cancel and they come back and they keep getting these timed exclusives, get them in. And again, it's going to be interesting for something like a don't not but I, what about when the next cuphead drops where it is a game that everybody's like whole or uh, um outer worlds right yeah the dlc no no outer, outer wild. you think about the outer wild yeah, yeah, yeah. a game yeah. that drops that everybody's like holy shit this is awesome yeah. or like holy void fuck. bastards or streets of rage for yeah but void bastards didn't get that much juice right like but it, it is like some fun though like a little bit a little bit of juice but i'm saying like something that comes along where everybody is having that moment of like holy shit this game's awesome and you can get it for a fucking dollar right now are you really gonna sit there like yeah what i want i i have i have hope it'll come to playstation i have hope it'll be there eventually i don't know that that's xbox's bet and i think right now it sounds a a bit preposterous because we're all so used to the console war and how it goes but i think Mm -hmm. when we get to September and this thing drops and people start using xCloud for the first time. I'm like, holy fuck, this actually works really well. And, like, holy, and like literally, it's like, oh my god, my my controller syncs right to my phone and I'm I'm there. I have it ready to go. Even with my other ones, like it's going to be interesting. And I think that this is what we're talking about. Of like, yeah, uh, you know, to the question that I'm we're way away from now or whatever. But Travis talking about Xbox seeming to be more double A than triple A. Of course, there's triple A games from Xbox. Of course, they have Xbox Game Studios working on triple A, but. They do have a lot of double A stuff in there. I would say Grounded is a double A game that has me interested. That has I want to play that. I want to see what that's about. Will I stick around? I don't know. But guess what? This one did cost me a dollar because for Xbox yeah. uh, for Halo Inf- for Halo Combat Evolved, I needed to up my membership again. And I was like, oh okay, whatever. And I did it. Like maybe that is enough. Maybe that gets me in. It's once you have the Netflix of gaming, you actually start using it, right? Greg, I said at the top of the show that we have seven stories today, and that was story number three. And so we're going to get into story number four. But before we do, let me tell you about our sponsor. Of course, uh, you can watch the show on patreon.com slash kind of funny games if you want to get it ad free. And speaking of ads, this episode of kind of funny games daily is brought to you by Klarna. Thanks to Klarna for supporting kind of funny games daily in Sweden. They don't shop. They Klarna. Klarna is a revolutionary new sh- new online shopping app from Sweden that allows you to shop thousands of online stores and pay for anything in four easy interest-free pay- payments that makes shopping smoother. With the Klarna app, you can shop anywhere online from the one app. It's easy to use and convenient to, to browse thousands of online stores from one convenient place. You can pay for anything in four interest-free payments. Uh, paying after delivery allows you to try before you buy, and you can also report returns directly in the app. You can also get the best deals with customized price drop alerts on items you've saved to your wish list. It's always good to shop smarter and save money. Tim loves how easy it is to find what you're looking for and get set up. Klarna is a smoother, friendlier, Swedisher way to shop online. It's the one-stop shopping app for uh, for browsing and buying anything online, all in one app, and allows you to, to pay for anything in four easy, interest-free payments. Download the Klarna app today. That's K-L-A-R-N-A, Swedish for shopping. Story number four, Ghost of Tsushima is selling like hotcakes. I'm pulling this from at PlayStation on Twitter. He tweeted this morning, Ghost of Tsushima is now PS4's fastest-selling first-party original IP debut, which is a long qualifier. Let's um, start. Let's start dropping a lot of asterisks in yeah. there. <laughs> so let me say that again. PS4's fastest-selling first-party original IP debut, with more than 2.4 million units sold through sold through globally in its first three days three days uh, three days of sales congratulations at sucker punch productions and thank you to our fans around the world for taking part of this journey of jen's journey right and so first party uh fastest selling first party original ip debut basically means that yeah it didn't sell as much as god of war or spider-man um but it did sell more than horizon zero dawn is basically like the 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 oh, some wow. of it um added context here from brendan sinclair at games Biz. Uh, Sony didn't indicate what uh, game Ghost of Tsushima toppled for that title, but 2017's Horizon Zero Dawn is a likely, con- is a likely candidate, uh, having sold 2.6 million copies in its first few weeks on sale. While it topped the, the list of original IP, Ghost of Tsushima still fell far short of the sales sales of some PS4 exclusives based on established franchises. God of War sold 3.1 million copies in its first three days uh, on sale, while Spider-Man uh, sold 3.3 million, Final Fantasy VII Remake sold 3.5 million, and The Last of Us Part II sold 4 million, um, all posted, posted progressively higher um, three-day three day sales totals. 
okay i see what they did there yeah th so those all sold better in the first three days um cool good news that's awesome yeah I, yeah, I, yeah, honestly, yeah yes sorry i'll say honestly i'm i'm surprised that it outsold horizon that's like the biggest thing for me but i guess more ps4 is out there exactly more ps4s i also think that uh it's an easier sell to wrap your head around Hey, we made a samurai. It's Assassin's Creed Samurai, or it's a Kurosawa film that you play. Versus, hey, uh, you're in the past. It looks like, but guess what? Robot dinosaurs. <laughs> you're like, what the fuck is this thing about? But yeah, no, great. Hats off to them. I know yesterday, in a similar thing to what's happening right now, we went so long on the show. I put a second story on that yesterday. That actually in Japan, there's a shortage of physical copies of Ghost of Tsushima because it's selling so well. Wow. So again, congratulations. That's really awesome. Uh, story number five, Red Dead Online is receiving a massive new update next week. This is from Matt Perslow at IGN. Red Dead Online is set to receive a massive update next week that adds a new frontier pursuit as well as tons of community requested features. The update will land on Tuesday, July 28th. The frontier pursuit has yet to be detailed, but Rockstar promises that it's an all new role focused on naturalism. In addition, the update adds a new, a new outlaw pass, a variety of community requested features and fixes, as well as a vague promise of more, dis more to discover in the months to come. The update, the, um, the update comes in the wake uh, of in-game protests by players upset by the lack of updates for Red Dead Online. Earlier this week, players gathered in mass dressed as clowns to signal their disappointment in the amount of content support for the game offered by Rockstar. Um, so cool, cool stuff. Um, this actually, you know what? I want to bring in a question from Weismark. I was going to skip it, but I think this brings up an interesting point. Okay. Weismark writes in and says, good morning, KFG crew. It looks like the power of peaceful, peaceful protest won out and Red Dead Online will be getting an update. My question is whether you think this update is enough to keep Red Dead Online relevant and growing. I'm, I'm reminded of the early days of GTA Online where it was riddled with technical problems and didn't have much to do at all. Back then, nobody could have imagined what imagined it would be as big as it is uh now but i don't see the huge potential of red dead online without a massive investment from rockstar and i think this brings up an interesting point because i was there playing gta online you know at, at the start of it when it was broken when uh when when people were not happy i was there yeah, yeah. i and lived it i lived it uh i went to war i did all that good stuff and it was 2015 early 2015 where they added the heist update and I feel like that was the one that kind of like, I feel like for the first, for the first couple of years, GTA online wasn't that bad. Like it was only that bad at its launch when like you literally couldn't connect. Um, but slowly, like after that, like it started getting better. Then yeah, heist was kind of the one that, that really brought it back and really brought people in mm -hmm. for red dead. We've passed that two year mark. Like we've passed the point, I think where GTA online uh, uh, was at when that game made it or started to make it's big comeback even though comeback doesn't feel like the big word but the big the bigger splash um sure. if you will i don't know what my expectation is now for the end point of red dead online or like the end goal i should say of red dead online like i don't know if that game is able to is going to be able to make any similar splash that gta online no did. i don't think so i think it's got an audience that people want to support and uh, I'm sorry. I think Rockstar has an audience with it that they want to support and do stuff with. But yeah, it didn't put up GTA Online numbers, so I don't think it has the legs that GTA Online did. Which I think is already evident by the fact that you started the PlayStation Five event right with the GTA Five trailer, being like, "Calm down, everybody. The game you still play and sink millions of dollars to, into is coming to PlayStation Five, and we will be happy to take your money for shark cards." Um, yeah, I think that they have an audience there that they, you know, tried to learn from, but it didn't take the same way. And part of that is support and, you know, the trade off back and forth to it. But I also think that, you know, GTA and uh, the, I guess, technological advancements of uh, San Andreas, right, speak loudly, more loudly to people than the cowboy fantasy. And I, I you know, I hate to burst the bubble of the questionnaire too. like, like, no. This isn't I would like we reported on the peaceful protest, the, the, cl the clown thing like last week, right? Like this is this is the Raimi suit all over again with Spider-Man where clearly they were working on this. And, and I think the peaceful protest of people in the community being like, these are fe features we want in updates eventually, uh, probably over months and months and months being there. Yeah, that got heard. But this isn't being forced by last week's clown protest. That's just. Uh, unfortunate thing that we came to the same tipping point where where they were ready to announce it is right when people were getting really pissed off too. Exactly. 
Uh, story number six, Suikoden's creators are crowdfunding a spiritual successor. This is Andrew Webster at The Verge. Some of the key creators behind beloved Suikoden franchise are attempting to crowdfund a spiritual successor. Today, a new team called Rabbit and Bear Studios announced an upcoming Kickstarter campaign to fund Ayudin Chronicle, a role-playing game designed to evoke PlayStation-era nostalgia. Uh, the campaign will debut on July 27th, and the team is led by Yoshitaka Murayama, a director and writer on the first two Suikoden titles. Quote, this is a new title for me, Murayama tells The Verge. Uh, they continue, or rather, is a combination of all my, all my experiences as a creator and trying to expand on that base, end quote. Aside from Mur Murayama, uh, Rabbit and Bear features an impressive list of talent. That includes uh, Junko Ka uh, Kawano, the lead artist on Suikoden 1 and, 1 and 4, Junichi Murakami, art director on Castlevania Ario Saro, uh, Suikoden tactics director Osamu Komuta, uh, and composers Motoi Sakuraba and Michiko Naruke. For fans of the Suikoden franchise, which debuted in 1995, but has uh, has been dormant for many years, the new game will sound very familiar. Ayudin Chronicle is described as a, quote, ode to, to the classic JRP, JRPG genre uh, from the PlayStation era that will feature classic JRPG ex exploration and battles in high-resolution 2.5D graphics uh, with a story of war and friendship and, and a diverse cast of 100 unique heroes, end quote. If the crowdfunding campaign is successful, Aiden Chronicle is expected to launch in the fall of 2022 on PC with other platforms possible uh, depending on stretch goals. Uh, and this game looks cool. Uh, we don't have time to show the teaser trailer unless Kevin's already been showing it. But um, basically, it looks almost like Octopath Traveler, which I think is, oh, nice. is really cool. Uh, really exciting stuff. And I've been seeing people uh, really excited about it on Twitter, uh, uh, including Jason Schreier, who apparently I saw Jason really Schreier freaking people. out about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our last story of the day, uh, story number seven, G4 <gasps> seems to be back. Greg, I'm going to pass this one over to you with no uh, no warning, because like this is one that, that was breaking as we started. And Kevin, I saw, if you like, could throw you were, you were this, on tweet, it. this Twitter right here, there's a Twitter video, and there's not much to say. There's a Twitter video teasing that G4 is back. It, it debuted during IGN's Comic-Con coverage, and if you're an audio listener, the trailer and, and uh, you know if you're an audio listener and then a g4 fan <laughs> uh you'll see or you would have seen uh going through basically what looks to be like a warehouse kind of where they would keep the uh uh crypt or whatever that indiana jones would capture right the, the ark of the covenant like there's all these crates that have g4 references on there like uh the fucking uh pudding the giant fucking thing of pudding and all this other stuff and then there's at the very back of the room a pong game that's been going on for basically since g4 signed off it's like nine million or something to nine million whatever uh it's a cute little thing that then is like all of a sudden g4 is back it seems like the g4 twitter account is back to being the g4 twitter account i think i saw that the g4 instagram account is back to being g4 it says incoming transmission at the end of this and then it has the g4 transition noise yeah like, and then it says well. 2021 right yeah, so there's the G4 logo back up, and then, yeah, 2021. 2021. Uh, really exciting stuff. I'm very curious on what this means as far as, like, what shows they're able to yeah. bring back, if they're able well, to bring back anyway. And that's the whole thing. Is it really, is G4 back? Is, like, fucking like as a TV Adam channel? Sessler back? Like, yeah, is it a TV channel? Is it a website? Is it a YouTube channel? Is it the people we know? Is it brand new people? Like, there's a whole bunch of questions to it, but it's, like, that's neat. That's cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, G4 had an audience, so it'll be neat to see what happens. G4 was an interesting thing, but it's also fascinating because that Venn thing just got announced this week too, which is basically like kept saying we're like G4 was ahead of its time, yada yada yada, and it's like they're a, they're going to be a video game channel and have a online presence, and they kept referencing G4, and then like by the end of the week, G4 is like we're back too, motherfucker, and it's like ah <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's really exciting. I feel like for so many people too, at least for me, G4 is like my first uh, uh, interaction with like games media. You know, like yeah. G four was like my first exposure to like, sure. oh, you can talk about video games on content or like be a host talking about video games, uh, which is really cool. And yeah, like Attack of the Show, uh, Cinema Tech, which is one that I feel like not enough people talk about, which was literally just like trailer after trailer after trailer. Like it was that show that just showed trailers for a good thirty minutes to an hour. I used to be obsessed uh, with that, and so I hope to see that return. But yeah, very curious, but yet yeah, very excited about uh, what that's going to be. But Greg. G4's return is so far away. It's if true. I wanted to know what's coming out to Mama Grop shops today, where would I look? You go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday.
Yeah. Out today, we got Tanberg for PS4 and Xbox One, Rainswept for Switch, Dex for Switch, Max in the Book of Chaos for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, Paper Beast for PC, Allison's Diary Rebirth for Xbox One, What's Trash, or no, What Trash for PC, uh, Pitcher and the Whale for PC, Penny's Path for PC, Hunter's All-Star Battle for PC, Pill Pop for PC and Mac, Sunset Shapes for PC, Toxicant for PC, Vibrant Venture for PC and Mac, Beast Brigade for PC, Candy Disaster for PC, Dungeon Warriors for PC, Detective Driver Miami Files for Switch, Middleborg City of Mages for Switch, Gsi the First Case for Switch, Kalok for Switch, Need a Packet for Switch, Ultra Core for PS Vita. Wow, a Vita like title. Oh, yeah, I got appearance. a press release for a Vita title. You know I put it in there. Man, uh, the lullaby of life for Apple Arcade, and then Dumb as Wizards is leaving early access on Steam today. New dates, uh, Paramount has announced its plans to release Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the movie, not the game, uh, in theaters on April 8th, 2022. So we'll see if that sticks, because who knows? Uh, Greg, usually we get into reader mail, but we're running very late in we the had show. The, the reader mail was in the show. You know how it that goes. That too, that too. Um, and so now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. We write in, let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. Uh, let's see here. How about, how about that Taylor Swift album, huh? What, what, I've been what, listening what? to the to the Logic album because he also dropped his his last album actually because um, he's, he's he's retiring going to Twitch to stream. Nail Bodges writes in and says, "You're wrong from yesterday." Blessing during the Xbox post show yesterday said he was concerned about playground games. The developer of Fable and Forza Horizon was only making Fable for the foreseeable future. This won't be happening. Playground Games has two full teams making games: one for Forza Horizon and one for the new RPG group that is making Fable. Uh, I had quite a few people tweet that at me, and that was one of those ones where I was like, I know, but I, I guess I'll clarify that. <laughs> that yes, they have two teams, and so they could be working on both games at the same time. Um, let's see. You're... I can't pronounce the username, but they write in and says, uh, you said ray tracing looks beautiful regarding Halo, foot Halo footage. There's no ray tracing per Aaron Greenberg. Ray tracing will be added at some point after launch. I don't recall saying ray tracing looks beautiful. I did. I did. Oh, I did. you did. I was, okay. I was talking about reflections. I just assumed, but that means gotcha. that it'll, it'll look even more beautiful. Kebab says the code name for Uncharted One was big. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, people are writing in saying that Sunua's voice actor was Melina Jurgens, which I think I said during the show, but. Um, you know, Discord can sometimes block people out when they say things over each other. So, boom. Melina Ergens, shout outs. And then... Uh, last bless Greg talked over you. I heard it. That's true. You said it. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's gotcha. video footage. Also, uh, Greg you. asked what the car was. It's a Puma. Because it looks like a Puma. In the last from from Kebabs, uh, Kebab Simulator, which was listed as coming out on Wednesday, has not released on Steam. Um, I was actually hoping to play that one. So there you go. Nanobot, Nanob, me and Nanob, Nanobot just got to meet up in the streets at some point, you know, because he yeah. loves having these back and forth. Nanobot just writes in and says, don't, Greg don't asked, engage them. Oh, I'm engaging because I'm tired of it, Greg. All right. It's time fight, to fight, encourages fight, them fight, more. Fight. Fight, fight, Nanobot just writes in and says, Greg asked what Molina's role was before Sinua's VO, hence for the Eurongs. Did I not say that? I, I'm pretty sure I said she was. She did, uh, or I think we clarified that together, actually. You said video That editor. she was a video editor. Yeah. And that's that's what Nanobot is clarifying in his Eurongs. I think he, I'm not well, we didn't say your name. We didn't know her name. No, we did no, know her name. Yeah, I said her blessing name. For oh, then I did said, talk over you. Yeah. All right, everybody. Fuck me. Jesus, have a nice weekend. Bye. All right, Nanobot, just meet me in the streets. It's me and you, mano a mano, we'll have a barbecue, we'll have a good time. Next week's hosts go like this. On Monday, it's me and Tim. Tuesday, it's me and Emron. Wednesday, Greg and Gary Witta. Thursday, it's Greg and me. And then Friday, it's Greg and Major Nelson. That's right. Whoa. I didn't wear this Xbox merch for nothing. We're now Team Xbox. Kind of funny. PSLV XOXO is canceled. Of course, the, that's a joke, by the way. It's not canceled. Uh, of course, this has been kind of funny. Games no, no, Daily. no, no. You just made an announcement. We need to we need to address oh, this. No. So I didn't address this. I remember there was something I needed to look ahead on, and I totally forgot. 
forgot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your official announcement that next week, Major Nelson is having a kind of funny weekend. On Thursday, he's going to show up and do We Have Cool Friends with us, a special episode on the 30th. Then on the 31st, he's going to pop on by, do Games Daily with me. And then Saturday, the 1st, he will be on the co-hosting chair for episode three of the Kind of Funny X-Cast. That's a lot of Major Nelson content coming your way next week. Should people write in questions? Can people write in questions somewhere? You know you can. Kind of we, we have cool friends. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Uh, remember, I'm doing Tim Schafer's interview today. So if you have Tim Schafer questions, get in fast. And then, yeah, games, uh, all the game stuff on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can get there for uh, games daily on next Friday. And of course, the X-Cast right now for today's X-Cast. It'll go up tomorrow. And then Saturday's X-Cast as well. And of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily. Pew, pew.